the they got a lot of Nigerian students over there, and they got other other African people besides Nigerians. I know there's some Ghanaians over there as well, but remember the last few weeks you had all of these people from the diaspora running up in our spaces telling us it ain't about white supremacy. You have all these people from the motherland telling us, hey, you niggas, stop all that racism. It's not white supremacy. You niggas, don't pull yourself up by your bootstraps. Okay. We keep talking about white supremacy. Y'all tell us, it is not the white man. It is you, I got a lazy. It is not the white supremacy. What is the, the eh? What is the white supremacy? Eh? Puh. Eh? What is the white supremacy? Oh, y'all try to shame us for talking about white supremacy. We don't deal with white supremacy. No, we don't. You, you got to deal with that. We don't deal with white supremacy. Oh, really? When we tell you, hey, man, white supremacy is on your bumper. No, we are no, we African. No, we, uh, we run our own economy. We, we got our own culture. We got our own culture, nigga. That's you. The white man. The white man beat you. You a slave, Akata. You a slave. Not me. We black African. This is what y'all been telling us for the last really month in these Twitter spaces. This is what y'all been telling us. Y'all been telling us all of this stuff. Y'all been telling us on oh, no, white supremacy. Eh? What is that? There's no way. In my homeland, there is no white supremacy. There is no white supremacy. That's you, you, you got to, you slaves. You bow down to the white man. The white man rule you. And then when we point out, hey man, what do you think is going on in your homeland? It is not white supremacy. Then what is it? It is this. Government. The government. It's the government. It's the government. The government. It's the government. It's the government. It's, it's the government. <laughs> it's the government. It is not white supremacy. It's the government. The government. It's the government. The government. Oh, y'all been talking about the damn government. Oh, y'all been just telling us it's the government. It ain't white supremacy. So now you get up there to Europe. You get there to Europe and it ain't the government. It's the white supremacists. That's putting the smack down on you. And then y'all want to look over here to us. This is the thing that kills me. Y'all do all that. It's the government. The government. It's the government. Ain't no white supremacy. But the minute you go to Europe and you're getting smacked around, y'all looking to us. Hey, hey, brother. My FBA, brother. Hey. Hello? Hello, are you there, brother? FBA. Hello, FBA. Are you there? Oh, y'all calling us on your prepaid phones now. You're calling us on your prepaid phones. Is my FBA brother there? Hey, hey, my nigga, can you help us? We're going to do some tries and tribulations. You were right. It was white supremacy all along. Yes, nigga, you were, you were right. I was wrong. Forgiveness is part of the culture. Shut up. So now it's white supremacy. You look in at us, it's white supremacy. Now, you over there in the Ukraine and they're smacking you around and not letting you get on planes and trains and they're not letting you get out of there. So now, y'all trying to get our attention now, huh? Hey, Akata. Oh, hey, niggas. Oh, Akata. Hey. Hello, excuse me, Akata. Can you help us? Don't, don't look at us. Turn around, turn back around. Use some of that culture of yours, all right? Use some of that culture of yours to handle the Ukrainians putting the smack down over there. I mean, look at what they're talking about over there. The Ukraine concerns mount as black people report racism while fleeing the war zone. It's obvious that we Africans are regarded as lower beings Inze forced to walk several hours to the Polish border. Okay. Oh, no. You know, 
Yo, right when the smackdown, you want to acknowledge white supremacy when the smackdown happens. Okay? Y'all want to get on, y'all want to play catch up. Right when the smackdown is happening, y'all want to play catch up when it's too late. Y'all should have been on what we were on. We've been telling you what the deal is. But y'all thought y'all were going to cut some little deal. Y'all were going to buck dance it up. And the white supremacists were going to give you a pass. And they don't give passes. That's what we've been trying to tell you. They don't give passes. Y'all think y'all going to get around the white supremacists and start buck dancing it up. And they're going to be good. Buck dancing don't work. That's what we've been telling you. We've been telling you that the buck dancing and Sam Bowen don't work. No, no, you have to book dance like me. I book dance harder. I do African book dance. Y'all playing these games. Now look at some of the what some of these people are. Look at this. Now look at this. People over there getting smacked around by the, the Ukrainians, and you still got people over there bucking their eyes. This is somebody who's over there who's in Poland. This is an African dude over in Poland. Hey, train to Poland got here. I and two other Africans entered first. A few minutes later, the police came and dragged us down from our cabin. Only Ukrainians are allowed. I don't blame them, though. I blame the African leaders. This dude is still buck dancing, guys. You got dudes over there getting drug out of trains right now, family. And still sitting up here talking about it's our government. 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 Hold on one second. Okay, let me go to it. Uh, okay, let me go to the, the main clip. Now, this is, I played this on my broadcast the other day. So, this is me talking at the reparations hearing. All right, now, the guy over here with the little beanie on, um, Joven Lewis. Okay, hold on. Watch his antics. Okay, Watch can him. you hear me clearly? Yeah, yes. they can. Okay. Um, I appreciate everyone for talking about the reparations um, qualifications. We have to make this very simple. Reparations are exclusively for foundational black Americans who were enslaved here in America. The reparations. Okay. Now watch the guy in the middle, Jobin Lewis. All right. Because he's kind of moving around very uncomfortably. The guy with the little beanie on his head. All right. Claims should go directly to people who are owed the 40 acres and the mule and their descendants. We have to stop muddying the waters when it comes to such a very important claim like this. We should not open the doors mm. to patients mm. throw on that mm. beer so we don't have a whole bunch of $5 FBAs popping up claiming to be descendants of slaves and foundational black Americans. We have to make this cash payments. Every other group is getting cash payments. Um, the Democrats just allotted about $10 million to- oh, Okay, so this this guy, Joven Lewis. Now this guy blocked me the very next day. I'm, I'm not saying anything out of order. I'm saying, hey, look, foundational black Americans, we should exclusively get these reparations. Reparations is exclusively for foundational black Americans, ladies and gentlemen. We have a specific lineage. We have a very specific lineage, ladies and gentlemen, and we have to be compensated for our ancestors building this country. Other groups didn't do it. The, the reparations is the part of the 40 acres and a mule that is old to us. We cannot muddy it with other stuff. We simply can't do that. Okay. Now this guy, the guy who blocked me, I, I look on Twitter the very next day, he blocked me. So this is him. This is um, Joven, all right? This is Joven right here. This is on his website. He was appointed by California Governor Gavin Newsom to serve on the Reparations Task Force. Now, Mr. Joven is, boom. As a Jamaican and a Montag, what's that, Gonian and a Montagonian? I'm celebrating the first Sam Sharp Day honoring and commemorating the general strike of December 27th, 1831. All right, so this is a, he's a Jamaican dude. He's Jamaican. And as we see, a lot of these people on these task force um, committees are, a lot of them are non-FBA. Even with HR 40. They got these people on these task force committees um, 
committees trying to decide our financial fate, which is wrong. Because they're always going to try to finesse something in for themselves. They have their own best interests at heart. They not What group is going to do something specifically for another group that they don't benefit from? You understand? They're not going to, they're not supposed to benefit from our damn reparations claim. So they've been, they've been trying to finesse something out of our reparations claim from day one. They're trying to un undermine it. Their thing is if they can't get none out of it, they'll undermine it altogether. There's a reason why the white supremacists, they put these people on these task forces. We have to call that out and delegitimize these task force um, committees that have these people on here that's doing a bunch of stalling. So now the next day after we, we testified on the thing, they were supposed to come out and determine who's eligible, which should be a piece of cake. But the fact that they have to determine who's eligible for reparations shows that they're trying to pull a trick bag move. The fact that we got a bunch of eyes on them and they didn't expect so many people to focus on them, they thought this was going to be done under the rug. They thought they would pull this little move under the rug and nobody would see it. Now it, we're watching them. Now there's enough eyes on them. They were supposed to determine who's eligible. That's when they were going to pull the whammy bammy, but we, we see them. We see them now. So what they did, they postponed the vote to determine who's eligible. They had a meeting and they said, okay, we're going to vote to postpone the vote to see who's eligible. You, you dig? So they're gonna, they said they're going to postpone the vote until sometime in March. And anybody that says Tyreek is a con man and he don't do shit politically, shut the fuck up. If Tyreek didn't pop his nosy ass up in that conference or that hearing, they would have went by and went through with business as usual and they would have came out with this bullshit fake determination. But just by Tyreek popping his nosy race baiting ass in there, they realize that people are watching and if they do this shit wrong, there's going to be outrage. Respect to you for that, Tyreek. Y'all asking, can black men be pro-black and still date out? Tyreek does it. All right. They're trying to get the trick back together. Now, right when they said that they're going to postpone the vote, these are stalling tactics to determine who's eligible because we're going to make sure they get the language right in this thing. They got to get the language right. And here's another trick back. Right when they postponed this, this came out this week. We got to watch out for the trick bag. Supporters say they have the votes in the House to pass the reparations bill after years of lobbying. So now they're talking about passing H.R. 40. All right. All of a sudden, right after they started stalling and delaying with the California thing, they're talking about they got enough votes to, to pass H.R. 40. H.R. 40, ladies and gentlemen, is a nothing burger. All right. This is the con game. Yeah, they'll pass H.R. 40. They, they have to think, okay, this California thing, we were going to kind of set a precedent with that, but too many folks are watching it and they're going to have to change the language. But H.R. 40, the language is already janky. So let's pass the H.R. 40 real quickly because the language is already jive and janky in H.R. 40. And we're not going to get anything out of H.R. 40. That's just a study. It's just a study. So what they're doing, they, they rush that HR 40 thing out here and they put that in the media. HR 40 is going to pass, which means nothing. HR 40 is a huge nothing burger. And what they want to do now, they want to dangle this because in the, in the midterms, they're going to say, hey, look, black people, we did do something for you. Um, HR 40 is passing. That's for reparations for you guys. So don't, don't act like we're not doing something for you. We're passing HR 40. No, 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 no. HR 40 is a nothing burger, guys. I'm telling you, they're getting all their talking points together right now. HR 40 is a nothing burger, waste of time. It's just a study. It is nothing, nothing, nothing. It is nothing. And it's been sitting around, floating around for the longest. They've been stalling with it. It's nothing. That's why we ain't really supporting HR 40 like that. 
See, they have to change the language in it, and they haven't changed the language. So, yeah, them pushing HR 40 is nothing. So this is a huge trick bag, ladies and gentlemen. They're stalling and delaying and all of this stuff. They're dangling that carrot in front of us so they don't have to give us anything. Now, in the meantime, LGBT groups are getting checks written. Asian groups, money. Afghan reg Afghanistan refugees, money. Hispanic refugees, money. Now, Ukrainians, they're already requesting money. They're requesting $6 billion already for the refugees. They're getting the money ready for the damn refugees to come over. And we get a damn study. We ain't going for that, ladies and gentlemen. We ain't playing that game. We are not playing that game. We got to stay on our square. We got to stay 10 toes down. We got to watch this thing from top to bottom. It is a finesse. And you got to watch out for these Encobra shills, these shills from the group Encobra. Listen to some of these folks. Watch these people. Let me show y'all some of this stuff from these Encobra people. There's a woman from Encobra that we were going at, going back and forth with today. Hold on. Hold on. I'm going to play that in a minute. I'm going to show that in a minute. But another thing, before I get on Encobra, I told people some of the trick bags that they- Yeah, exactly, Tyreek. The whole HR 40 council is non-FBA. That's how it's being undermined. That's why it's still a study to see whether or not reparations is feasible. And as far as all the black politicians that are supposed to be working on our behalf, yeah, they're all either non-FBA or married to somebody non-FBA. This was the tactic we realized was being used against us. They gatekeeped us into submission. They hired a few affirmative action, feel-good black governors and mayors, you know, through the 60s and the 70s, you know, and that put the black political body to sleep for a hundred years, back onto the Democratic plantation. You know, the party of abortion, welfare, and immigrants. You know, that whole Edmund Pettus Bridge Quartet, them post-civil rights figureheads, MLK, Jesse Jackson, Ralph David Abernathy, Roy Wilkins, all of them, Baynard Rustin, Coleman Young in Detroit, Maynard Jackson in Atlanta, Tom Bradley, Los Angeles, Doris Davis Compton, all that was feel-good shit, put niggas to sleep. Harold Washington, Chicago, put niggas to sleep. David Dinkins, New York City, put niggas to sleep. Kwame Kilpatrick, all gatekeepers, co-opted, secured nothing for the foundation of black American over the last 50 years. The last thing the gatekeepers actually secured for the foundation of black Americans as the Masons, Eastern Stars, Boulay, and 10%. Last time they did anything for blacks was the Civil Rights Bill. Ever since then, they've just been bringing in non-foundational black Americans. Tethers, buffer classes, gaskets. Going back and forth with today. Hold on. Hold on. I'm going to play that in a minute. I'm going to show that in a minute. But another thing, before I get on in Cobra, I told people some of the trick bags that they were going to try to use to glom everybody on to our reparations claim. I told people the name of the game is trying, they got to get black immigrants on board. They got to get us Foundation of Black Americans to accept black immigrant groups. That's pivotal. Because they know once we let that happen, everything goes downhill. I'm gonna this is so important, family. We gotta stay on this. They keep trying to get us to accept black immigrants 
in our reparations claim because they know that is going to undermine it because if we, we let a black immigrant in, then Latino immigrants, then Asian immigrants, that's going to open the door for all other immigrant groups and then we're going to be right back at square one. We're going to be undermined. They know this. This is why they keep trying to shame us. Well, how come you guys don't want black immigrants? Are you guys xenophobic? Why you hate Africans so much? Why you hate Caribbean? So these are shaming tactics, guys. This is why every time we do a space talking about reparations, some tether hops in the room. How come y'all hate African stuff? How come y'all hate Caribbeans? You see? <laughs> I don't care what nobody say. <laughs> Tyreek is my favorite race beta. Yes, he is. <laughs> yeah, yes, he is. I am conflicted. I hate that fucking mink slide shit. I can't stand that shit. But I, I can't fucking play games. The nigga be on it. I ain't going to front. He be on it. You know, like I said, Tyreek is the answer to that question. Y'all keep trying to get answered. Can you be pro-black and marry out? Yes. What's Tyreek? And then I see niggas say shit like, oh, Tyreek not pro-black. Tyreek this. Tyreek a... Where's that museum, nigga? <laughs> <laughs>